Hello, this is HG Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Rhapsody of Musical Adventure in the PS1 version today. Let's see, so I've made my way up through the plot to the final chapter, and I want to go into the netherworld here, which is quite different in this version. Let's see, so yeah, I've got Elkoon back on the magic gear there, and yeah, I've got another Dragon's Claw at some point. And I've given the Sonic Shoes to Shart, so that way, if I need, like, another quick spell to finish off a group of enemies, she'll have the speed to do that, though I generally use her for physical attacks if she's in range. So, let's see what we got going on in here. Maybe I'll show some of the random battles, just to show you how we're doing with all that. Let's see. So, yeah, no treasure on this floor. There's actually a lot more floors to the dungeon to go through in the PS1 version of the game. It's just that there's... Uh, what is it? Well, yeah, I mean, there's well stuff to find. There's some treasures are different and everything like that. I'll show that illustration later. There's actually three that we can collect in the netherworld. So I'll just show them all at once once I've gotten that far, but... Okay, so let's see. With all these guys, I'm probably going to need to use some other spells like, uh... Well, I don't know if Holy would be enough. Hmm, that might be enough. Or... No, I don't have Giga Holy. Okay, never mind. We'll just go with regular Holy then. So yeah, if there's like four or more enemies around, then... Yeah, you want to use the multi-targeting spells. But if there's only like two or three, physical attacks would be the way to go. Kind of wastes my horn command that I used with Cornette, but it's not like she's going to have anything better to do. So, yeah, don't worry about it. Let's see. So, for the next couple floors, yeah, nothing in the side rooms or anything like that. Okay, this one has something interesting, I think. Yeah. Go over here. We get a new accessory exclusive to the PS1 version of the game. The Charm of Valor. It boosts your offense stat by 30. Even more powerful than the Dragon's Claw there. So that's pretty nice. So let's see. Give that one to Kid. Give Hand Down the Dragon's Claw to Shart. That ought to help her out a bit for now. And then, okay, we gotta go down then to continue onward. There's like almost twice as many floors in this version of the game. It's pretty ridiculous. And most of them don't have stuff in them either. The They still have like the plus sign formation for the rooms that the DS version has. But we can get illustrations here at least. Nice. I'm not going to be doing absolutely everything, uh, what is it, or no, I'm thinking of something else. I mean, I will do things here, but, uh, yeah, I didn't level up the Mustaki Warriors in this version of the game, so, well, you'll see how I'm going to handle things when we get to the end there. Yeah, I might as well go out front there and lead the way, or I could just go use my physical attacks. Yeah, Horn basically takes any of your puppets and makes their physical attack into, uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, instant death, basically. You just deal so much damage with that stuff. Unfortunately, Elkoon doesn't have the range, so I gotta rely on magic for his stuff. And sometimes the spells just aren't quite enough to get the job done there. Okay, let's see. I think there's a chest here? Yes! Okay. And there we got the last illustration in the dungeon there. So, yeah, let's take a look at what we got there. Let's see. There's still one more that we have yet to get, but we'll get there eventually. Whoa! The dragon looks a lot fatter than it did in at the beginning of the game. Ho, cow! So yeah, I think there's only 15 illustrations in the entire game. 
you'd think there'd be 16, but no, no, there's just 15 there. But we almost got all of them. I thought a twelve had more like blonde hair than like a redhead or something, but okay, whatever works there. Maybe something they changed periodically. But all right, let's keep on going down here. Let's see, I think we're on like the twelfth basement level by now. So many floors to get through. But fortunately, the encounter rate is a lot lower than in the DS version of the game. So there is that. Generally, I usually like having the increased encounter rate in the DS version of the game. I think the encounter rate is really low in this version to a detriment, especially if you're trying to, you know, recruit monsters or anything. Whoa, I forgot to heal up Shark. Well, hopefully she'll be okay. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna have to take out that one Super Bones there. Let's see, Mega Lightning? Nah, that's gonna be way too short. Hmm. Well, I'll do what I can there. It's not like I'm really worried about my MP or anything. Dealt more damage than I thought you would. But, uh, okay, yeah, just, uh, take her from behind there, kid. And let's see. Can you do anything, Cornette? No, not good enough. There you go. But, uh, yeah, uh, let's heal up this time around. Let's see. Well, we don't need too much. Oh, yeah, a little more there. There you go. And this one, this is where we get the magic robes, and I want to put those to use in the near future. Not right now, but soon enough. Hey, all right. We got, uh, or gained a level for a shark to learn Giga Holy. And that has a lot more range than the regular Holy spell does. The MP costs of the higher tier spells in this version of the game are a lot better than they are in the DS version of the game. It seemed like in the DS version they wanted to make the lower tier spells more cost efficient or something like that. But first, let's take these guys out. Ooh, wow, they got a lot of HP. I don't think everyone can get into range, but we'll see what we can do. Hmm. Yeah, why don't you just go out there with the defense robes? Ah, well, that solves the problem. Hmm, maybe not. Okay, if I do this, I think I can kill the guy? Yes, okay. And then I can get Kid to get in melee range there. So, yeah, nothing too extraordinary with the uh, random battles around here. And here we get the Dark Stone. And I, I also remembered to recruit Legend in this version of the game. Not that it's really going to do us any good. You don't learn any spells or abilities or anything like that in this version. Kind of makes me wonder what's really the point of the puppet quests in the PS1 version. I mean, you'd think they would have, like, maybe some sort of storyline impact or something, but... Eh, I'm not really seeing that. Okay, so, the ancient weapon is right above there. Let's see, I want to get the Charm of Valor back there. Okay, let's give that one to Cornette along with the magic robes, and I'm not even going to bother bringing, uh, what is it, They're removing the equipment from my other party members there. So, let's see, just like in the DS version, you do have to have the three Nustaki warriors in your party, but we really don't need to, or, what is it? Yeah, we really don't need to level them up in this version of the game. Just walk straight up and everything pretty much proceeds as before. Oh, Polanski did that too? I thought it was just Mistaki. Hmm, maybe that was uh, something I glossed over there. 
But I suppose that would make sense. Uh, is that? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, now's as good a time as ever. For Super Boss time! Or rather, not Super Boss time, because this is immensely easier in this version of the game. Let's see. Oh, no, I don't want to use that. I want to use Pancake to take out the three clones there. There you go. I'm not even worried about the other guys. They will probably die eventually. This is actually a bit of a unfavorable formation there because we got the weapon behind the rock there and it can be difficult to, like, I don't know. Well, he, he hides behind it and sometimes it can take a little longer to get the job done, but, uh, okay, so once you've gotten the, uh, what was that? Yeah, once you've gotten into, or gotten rid of all the clones there, then just go into melee range with Cornet there, and then, yeah, just, uh, get in a quick hit there, and then get out of the way. My, the Mustaki Warriors, they are not going to be able to do anything to this guy. They won't even be able to hit the guy because their speed stat is so low. But I don't really need them. You don't need to keep them alive in order to do this side quest in this version of the game. Unlike, like there was Flair's quest. If he died in the middle of everything in that boss gauntlet there then the game would say, hey, you can't do that or something, and you gotta start over, whatever. Okay, so yeah, just get those guys killed off so that I don't need to do anything else there. So basically, get in, get up to the guy, hit him, then wait for the next round, hit him again, and then back off because I don't even know if the weapon can move at all. I don't think I've ever seen it move. Maybe it has like a move stat of one or something. I don't know. Okay, so yeah, I want to keep Cornet. Uh, what is it? Yeah, I want to keep Cornet above 100 HP. So let's use an elixir candy to help her out there to heal up. Ow, that's a lot of HP, although I don't know that you would ever get up to that amount, but okay. Okay, so, yeah, now just get back in there, and then. Yeah, unfortunately, sometimes the weapon looks use Storm on you, and that deals a lot more damage than it did in the DS version of the game, actually. One of the few ways they actually made this a bit harder, but that's why I've got the Magic Rose equipped on Cornette there. Sometimes the weapon will just pass its turn, even though it could use Storm against you, I think we'll be okay with this HP. But yeah, sometimes it just randomly decides, eh, I don't feel like casting a spell today. Let's just uh, get out of here. Or let's just not do anything for this round. If you don't have a bunch of elixir candies, you can buy them at some shops there. Yeah, you see, it just didn't do anything that round for some reason. It does have some MP left, I think, doesn't it? Yeah, it's got plenty of MP left, but it just doesn't want to do anything, I guess, or something. So, yeah, there we go. So, yeah, just hit and run, just keep on doing that over and over again, and keep your HP above 100 there, usually, and you'll be good. Hooray! So, yeah, that's pretty much one of the big reasons why I'm using the DS version of the game, but yeah, I mean, it's just a lot more difficult in the DS version. Well, you didn't, but uh, we can pretend you did. Well, good for you then. Well, goodbye! 
Okay, so the way to get out of this place is the same as in the the DS version of the game. They got that teleporter you take out of here. You can't use teleporters, the item teleporter, in order to get out of here. So, all right, that's everything I wanted to show in the PS1 version here. So now let's return to the DS version of the game. Okay, we're back in the DS version of the game, and I've loaded my save file from the beginning of the previous episode, before we completed the quest for Caroline and Michael. And I think once you've recruited them, if you come back here, well, you get a little different dialogue from the king. Oh, what do you mean? Oh. That might be, I don't know. Maybe you shouldn't have sent us to kill the guy, huh? Not such a bright idea. But yeah, I didn't show that line earlier because I didn't think there was really any relevance to it. But, well, I think there actually is. So now we're going from where I finished the previous episode after completing the quest with Caroline and Michael and all the Netherworld stuff I did there. What do you mean? Who are you talking about? Huh? Oh, I guess they had a tadpole or a baby frog or something? I don't know. Huh. Well, yeah, he's, he's kind of late for that now. He's not even in his house anymore. So, I don't know if you can ever find Port Gamma again. But anyway, so once you've completed the side quest, yeah, uh, well, that came out of nowhere, but, uh, well, he deserved worse. And if you actually try to go into the castle, there's no one there. Like, no guards, no none of the other frogs or anything. The whole place is empty for some reason. I don't know why. I mean, I guess the king died and the whole government fell apart or something. I don't know. But all right, so now I'm loading the file that I created way earlier back at the Tower of Ninetail where I got the Thunderstone instead of the Holy Stone. And I've also rearranged my setup here a little bit. I just threw whatever on my party members. But uh, yeah, just make sure you got like at least 115 speed and I think you'll be fine. So, like uh, what the Polanski was saying, is you gotta bring the five stones here for boss time! And, yeah, we got a dragon. A really small dragon, but a dragon nonetheless that we need to kill in order to get the job done. So, let's see, since this guy is Thunder Elemental, I'm using Koro Attack instead of Thunder Punch there, and this boss changes depending on which elemental stone you got, the Holy Stone or the Thunder Stone, and they both take up a separate bestiary slot, so that's why I created the separate file from way before there, so that way I could get the Thunder Dragon bestiary entry here, and then from my main file we can get the other dragon bestiary entry there as well. But can we place all the elemental stones on the altars and make it up to Beauty Castle? Find out next time on Let's Play Rhapsody, a musical adventure. This is H.G. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day!